Hello, welcome back to another episode of the vlog. Um, I've certainly slacked on today's vlog considering it is 5.07 p.m. and I'm just starting the vlog now. Uh, to make it up for you, I skated the entire canal yesterday though, so I, and I took some videos, so I'll put some of those in so you can check those out. <laughs> Back to back years skating the full canal. I think that's gonna be my new annual tradition. I'm fucking I'm exhausted. So fun though. You wanna see something a little a little bit nasty? So this 15, this this skate is not like a leisurely skate. It's like a 15.6 kilometer. I try to go as fast as I can. So this is the front of my shirt. And that's the back of my shirt. <laughs> A little bit nasty, but I think that's signs of a of a solid workout. Okay, I don't know if you could actually tell the difference in that last clip, so I'll show you. Like right here, like there was like definite like differences. <laughs> um, other than that, uh, today was a today was Tuesday, so yesterday was a, it was a holiday. It was family day here in Ottawa or Ontario, so I kind of I worked a little bit, but a pretty light day. Pretty late day again today, honestly. I was feeling pretty tired. I even took a nap in the middle of the afternoon. It was just one of those days. Um, but I wanted to make sure I, I was sharp because tonight is my podcast with Tom Dreesen. And if you watched, I think it was my last vlog, um, I booked the podcast with Tom. And Tom is a famous comedian. Um, he's been on The Tonight Show 61 times, 50 of those times with Johnny Carson uh, back in the 70s and 80s. Um, he toured with Frank Sinatra for 13, 14 years. He's also, he's kind of like, the, was one of the, lead, part of the leadership of the Comedians for Compensation in the mid-70s, mid-late 70s, that helped comedians around the world today uh, get paid for doing their gigs. Um, best friends with Dave Letterman, very accomplished, very well-connected comedian. Um, and yeah, so I reached out to him through a form on his website and he got back to me saying he was going to come on the podcast. And so that's tonight. Uh, he just had a new book, so it's kind of part of his book tour. Um, so I got to make sure I plug his book a lot in the podcast, but I'm stoked. I'm stoked. So that is at 8 p.m., so 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time because he's in California. So a bit of a later podcast tonight, but that's that's what we got on deck for the rest of the day today. Other than that, today's also Pancake Tuesday, so Holly and I are going to make some pancakes, and then I'm just going to get ready for this podcast. Oh, fuck. Shit. Well, you use a spoon, but our spoon is dirty. I just want to wash it. Update on the on the pancake situation. You should never cook or bake whatever this is and vlog at the same time. Because I don't know if you can see. I'm gonna drop this. It's gonna work. I did. Is it gonna focus? No. Maybe if I hide behind it. No. Okay, screw it. I did one and a quarter cup of milk and one cup of batter, which is the opposite. It's reversed. So we have some runny pancakes. Um, so moral of the story, don't vlog and cook at the same time. It doesn't end very well. All right, I forgot to vlog anything with the pancakes. They actually turned out not that bad. Um, but anyways, we are under one hour away from the podcast with Tom Dreesen. So I got to get everything set up here in the office slash bedroom slash studio, whatever you want to call this room. Tom should be on the call any minute here. Um, really looking forward to 
to this interview. Um, a little nervous and not for the interview itself, but for my time management because this is the most notes I've had for a podcast by far. I had one last week that had 10 pages and that was my most. I've far surpassed that. This podcast, I have 17 pages and 7,300 words worth of notes. So uh, maybe we'll be able to get them for a, a second follow-up interview. Now, but figuring out how to manage this on the podcast is going to be a little bit of a challenge for me, um, but still super excited. It'll be on any minute now. Um, yeah, I uh, will check in with you after the podcast. I'll probably put some clips in here as well from the interview, but I'll check in with so you. So despite after. speaking in front of people being the number one ranked fear, you made it your life's mission to do that all the time. And I'm curious what kept you going when you move to LA, you're staying at a friend's house, you end up getting tossed out of the friend's house because of a jealous boyfriend. You're sleeping in a car for, I believe, 30 days. You're eating on a dollar a day. I believe it was um, corn and cluck for under a buck. What's keeping you going at that point? You know, you have a wife and kids back home. You're sleeping in a car. You're trying to get on at the comedy store. You can't day after day. Why do you keep going? This might be the best interview I've ever done because you actually read the book. You know, this is a fantastic interview because you actually read the book. And I have hosted shows in my career. And whenever I had an author, I always read the book. If I stayed up till five in the morning and had to do a morning show because I felt it wouldn't be fair if I didn't read it. But thank you very much. And you called and pretended to be your own agent to get that show, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, are you really did I, I can't get over it. I'm curious about that time. Everyone was moving, like we talked about. All these comedians were migrating to Los Angeles to work at the comedy store to try and get on the Tonight Show and so on and so forth. So I'm curious about a couple comedians in particular. I want to start with Dave. And from my understanding, you met Dave in the parking lot after you stole your your material and you beat the shit out of him, right? <laughs> uh, you know the story. Uh, you know what's so funny about that? I don't know where it happened to Billy Crystal, but I'm on Jacob's show right now. Eat your heart out, Billy. Just wrapped up recording with Tom Dreesen, and wow, that was so, so much fun, so good. Ultimately, I kind of, I realized as we were going, and like, he's very good at telling stories and they're sometimes long answers. So I, I knew pretty quickly that we weren't gonna be able to get through everything. So I made the decision that I was only gonna focus on the first 10 pages. And where the 10 pages ends is when we start on the Frank Sinatra stories. And so the reason I decided to do that is I was like, I'm gonna position it, like I'm gonna get him to tell his best Frank Sinatra story. And then if people wanna hear the rest of the Sinatra stories, which are amazing, like I had pages on Frank Sinatra that we didn't get to. Um, but if people want to hear more about Frank Sinatra and Tom's stories, they could buy his book. And so that's how I ended up doing it. So we didn't talk a ton about Frank Sinatra, but we got a ton of other stories. I got a story from Tom on Freddie Prince Sr., not Jr., on Freddie Prince. That is, I listened to probably 50 Tom Dreesen interviews prepping for this from all years, 1980, 90, 20, 2000s, 2010 like a bunch from this year as well, because he's doing a bunch because of his new book. And he told me a story about Freddie Prince that I have never heard that is insane. Like it was the moment, like I might even post it to YouTube as a solo clip, which I never do. It's just an incredible, incredible story about Freddie Prince, which if you know Freddie Prince and his story became, went on The Tonight Show overnight, became a superstar sitcom, couldn't go anywhere without being mom. Like he was massive three years later ended up committing suicide and he tells a story just i don't want to give it maybe i'll play the clip right here freddie when he came to chicago you know and stayed at my apartment that night i took him back downtown he was opening at the playboy club for jonah jones um and he, and, and he we went to this little bar he had a night off we went to this little bar and we were watching a trio play and and i was watching the bar and we were kids I, would, I was older than Freddie, but we were, we were still new in the business. And he was watching the band, and he looked at me, he said to me, while he's looking at the band, he said, I'm gonna become a big star one day. And I'm looking at the band, and I said, yeah, yeah. We all talk like that in those days. He said, then I'm gonna go out fast, man. And I turned and looked at him, I said, I'm sorry. What are you talking about? He said, fast, man, like James Dean. I said, a, a car accident? No, man, I'm just gonna go out fast. And he changed the subject. He also stopped me halfway through the interview and told me this is one of the best interviews he's ever done because I was because he could tell I read the book and I was asking really good questions based on the book. And so he said that on the recording, so I have that recorded. I will probably turn that into a quote graphic and post it on on my Instagram. Um, but 
I definitely went, went a little bit long, about eight minutes long, but we started eight minutes late because we were just chatting. Um, but yeah, about eight minutes long. Um, I could tell he was, he was getting a little antsy to get off the call. Um, he was hungry because he had eaten dinner yet. Um, so I appreciate him for doing that. But after the podcast, he uh, he told me, and I'm recording this now basically so I can remember this moment for for the rest of time because I, it was after I stopped recording. Um, he looked at me. He said, "This was this was amazing. Um, you were so well prepared. You have a future." And he said, "This was amazing. You definitely have a future in this." You were so well prepared. And the thing with him saying you were so well prepared is he followed it up by saying, being prepared is so important for people in our business. I'm not saying he put me on his level, but to refer to it as our business and almost refer to us as equals in some sense really meant a lot to me. And I know that he probably did that intentionally because four months into his comedy career, he ended up going backstage, sneaking backstage and talking to a comedian um, that was successful. His name was Mort Saul. And he talked to Mort Saul backstage and Mort Saul did the same thing. He said things like us comedians are people in our business. So he essentially did what Mort Saul did for him to me. But referring to it as our business really meant a lot to me. Um, So I don't think that could have gone any better. That was amazing. Um, So excited to share that with everyone. Uh, it'll be coming out in about a, just over a month's time. But, man, I am just, as you can tell, I'm stoked right now. But, man, saying is one of the best interviews he's ever done. And he's done over 500 national TV spots, 61 on The Tonight Show. Tons of, probably thousands of interviews at this point. And he said this is one of the best ones he's ever done. So, and then to refer to it as our business, I'm just, that was amazing. I'm so, so, so happy.